I think he is trying to be genuine, but I still think he wants that external validation. What's happening everyone? My name is Max, and today we're gonna to be checking out a video with Liam Payne and looking at his communication skills. Now I haven't seen this video yet, so this will be my first time reacting to it. The video is called I'm Back. I just saw it pop up on my YouTube feed today. I know he got a lot of flack for his interview on Impulsive a few months ago, and that's actually the last time I reacted to him. Let's see what Liam Payne has to say here, and, and I'll give you my thoughts. Let's get right into this. Back. My last upload was May the 1st or something like that. 31st, wow, it's been a while. I just took a little bit of time out, actually. Sorry I've, uh, for the MIA. You guys know there was a few reasons why I did that. And I just need to take a little bit of time out for myself, actually, because I kind of became somebody who I didn't really recognize anymore, and I'm sure you guys didn't either. So last time you guys saw me, I was in Minneapolis, which was a good time, part of it. I met some great friends. I met Gary V, uh, who you all know is a very inspirational person. And then I went on the Logan Paul podcast. <laughs> I mean, it was nice to meet Logan. So that laugh indicates that he knows that sort of where he kind of messed up. And I went on the Logan Paul podcast. I remember going on Twitter and people just going hard on him. I couldn't imagine how hard that must be to get that much criticism and hate. And if you're not in a good place and you're reading that, you're probably taking that in. And that is just debilitating completely. So I'm not surprised that he had to take some time off here and kind of separate himself from that world. Although I will say like the laughing seems a little fake. Anyone else with me here? The laughing does seem a little fake. It seems a little forced. <laughs> I think for me, a lot of what I just said just came from the wrong place. I was so angry at what was going on around me. And instead of taking a look inwards, I decided to look outwards at everybody else. And I just think, yeah, I just took it out on everybody else, which is just wrong, really. And my own frustrations with my own career and where I kind of landed. I took shots at everybody else, which is wrong. So obviously I want to apologize for that in the, in the first instance, because that's definitely not me. Obviously one of the big... It's interesting that he says, okay, because that's definitely not me. Because that's definitely not me. You know, the way I read into that is like he's still kind of trying to prove himself here. He's trying to prove himself. I, I sense there's still, there's still an act going on here with Liam. I'm just gonna be real with you guys. I'm sensing there's still a little bit of an act here. I think he is trying to be genuine, but I think the act comes from, I still think he wants that external validation. Yeah, I I'm just sensing there's still a little bit of like a call to like me. You know, just with the laughing and the quick cuts and the looking away and I don't know. My senses are going off a little bit here. Obviously one of the biggest remarks I made was about the One Direction thing. And a lot of self-protection, I suppose, in that moment more than anything. The rest of the boys are really stuck by me and when, when I needed them most, they you know kind of came to the rescue. Even Zane as well, which is why you know I, I did send him a little thank you on, on, online actually. It came across really big headed, didn't it? Wow. It was hard for me to watch back. Came across as really big headed. Okay, so he's sort of admitting where he went wrong here, you know? A big L and not in the Liam kind. In fact, it's probably one of those life changing moments that, that saved my life in a way and without it, I wouldn't have, you know, I went through a lot, don't get me wrong, but to actually arrive where I am here today and where I hope we're gonna go forward together, it could be, one of those makers or breakers. It was tough to read some of the stuff online. I think thick skin's quite fake. No matter what you read, it still it still hurts. And you know, uh, like sure. I said, a lot of it was warranted and just people trying to protect the people they're fans of and the people they love and care about. So that's absolutely fine. Man, I, I feel bad for him, kind of. Like he's, you know, I think he's very, very aware of of the the negative comments that are going on. I think his response is definitely influenced by by the comments. He, he almost, it seems like, wants to kind of appease those people. Just people trying to protect the people they're fans of and the people they love and care about, so that's absolutely fine. I feel like he's addressing our, the audience here through the filter of the negative comments as opposed to what he genuinely wants to say. It's almost like he wants to get the people who wrote all those negative comments on his side as opposed to kind of speaking from his heart. Maybe there's a little bit of both but that's what I'm sensing a little. He could have just come back and done another interview and I think people would have forgotten about the impulsive moment. You know what I mean? I think him just kind of living in his life as a good dude, as a genuine dude, making music, maybe doing a couple interviews and people can sense that he's in a good place and people can sense that he's being genuine. Do you know what I mean? You know, I, I think he's honestly reflected on what he's done, but I think the pain from you know, the media hit him so hard that 
it's still hard for him to kind of just be himself genuinely. I think it was probably a really traumatic experience for him on top of all the other shit that he's going through. I think he's going through a lot still, it seems like. It still seems like. This is a whole hour. We could spend all day talking about that, but I suppose you guys have seen enough of it. I've definitely seen enough of it at this point. It was a little bit cringe, wasn't it? After that video was uploaded, I went away for a little bit. I don't know if you noticed. Just to explain that through a little bit, because I definitely want to give a little bit of credit towards the process of doing this as well. I kind of had to go away. To... All right, cool, cool, cool on him for like, again, like I, I definitely have to give him credit for some of this video, for sure. Coming out and saying, hey, like, you know, I definitely watched the, the Impulsive podcast. I definitely know it was cringe. That's right, and I was getting a lot of hate online. There was death threats. There was all sorts of stuff. My biggest worry was actually stepping off the team bus that day because I was, I was initially sure I was going to get booed. I'd never really been in that position with you guys before. I kind of ruined that moment for myself. To be honest with you, I just kind of got through the game at that point because it wasn't really about me, let's be honest. It was about saving children around the world, and it was a great opportunity. I'm so glad I got to play in it again this year, um, which was much better. I really enjoyed that. I'm so thankful for the guys looking out for me and kind of coaching me through that because... I feel like my, my skeptic radar is on a little bit with Liam here. It wasn't really about me, let's be honest. It was about saving children around the world. And it... Like, is he just saying that to win points with the audience? Sort of like a virtue signal? Maybe not. But that's the sense that I'm getting from him. He's trying to get the audience on his side. But after that, I got to go to this wonderful place in Louisiana and kind of go and get my head straight. One of the main things that they ask you when you're trying to find out about yourself is like, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? What do you do for fun? I had no idea. I did not know what to answer for that question. It was a short thing when I arrived to kind of put a stopper on life and work. I didn't have my phone for, you know, nearly a hundred days. I didn't connect with the outside world at all. And it was kind of prepping me for that moment. Upon leaving, actually, it was the hardest point was turning the phone back on, if I'm honest with you, because it was a little bit scary. But yeah. it was a nice world to come back out to. Ever since then, I've just kind of... Yeah, no, I believe that. Uh, I believe that. Again, there's definitely moments of believability here, for sure. And I think he's, the words that he's speaking, a lot of them are honest, yeah. I don't think he's lying about any of that. Time with Bear has been really, really great. Honestly, more than anything, I want to say thank you to, to him and his mom for giving me a little bit of freedom to go and, 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 and get well in that moment, because I had to. There's no point trying to be a dad when you've got nothing to teach. And I don't think up until this point, I really had much to, to say to him other than just caring for him deeply and loving him very deeply, which obviously are the most important things. But I just kind of feel like I've got more of a grip on life now and everything mm. was kind of getting away from me. I kind of have got more more of a, of, a, of a handle on, let's say. And he's awesome. I mean, he's growing up far too quickly. He actually texted me the other day. All right, I'm liking these last couple of minutes from Liam. I'm liking these last couple of min minutes from Liam. And what kind of happened was I was watching this beautiful symphony. I was having a drink and then I was like, you know what, this just isn't serving me at all. I don't really need this right now. It's the first time I've ever put a drink down and gone, someone asked, yeah, you finish that. I don't need it. And I haven't picked one up since, which has almost been six months, which I'm excited about. It's good. It's good to be in this position. Good for him. Yeah, I definitely don't need those things anymore. Party's over. So yeah, I'm actually going back. Yeah, so again, that little instance there kind of felt like he was trying to prove to the audience there that he's sober, he doesn't need it anymore, he's good. I definitely don't need those things anymore. The party's over. Again, I'm not saying he's not being honest, and I'm not saying that he's not going to try to stick to this, but I think saying those things was still a was still a bid to try to get the audience to believe him. And he's being a little, uh, at times it feels just extra about it, Again, not that I don't think he's going to try to do all these things, and not that I don't think he wants to be a good person, and he is a good person, but I sense that there's still, you know, a void in him, is what I'm saying. So it does sound like, you know, he is obviously self aware, and it does sound like he wants to be better. So definitely got to give him props to that. New frame of mind and not having anything to lean on does, is, does sound quite daunting, but I'm sure I'll be fine. Those famous last words. Ooh, a little bit of jeopardy. <laughs> Who doesn't love it? These are all the dates here. Yeah. Um, obviously, I got to do the content with Nerbet, which was quite fun. And like I said, I could keep going on about what's behind me and the many, 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 many mistakes that I've made up to this point. It definitely humbled me, and I'm hoping from here on out I can kind of make the content that you guys want to see. Please leave some notes below, and um, I'll see you soon. Yeah, and I think the cutting as well, especially in sort of like a quasi-apology video, probably makes people feel like, hey, what are you hiding over here? You kind of lose the little mannerisms that are really important when we're absorbing people's communication. You know, the thinking while there's a pause, and these are the tells that we look into to sort of determine whether we like you and trust you. But anyway, I mean, my overall message to Liam would be, you're a talented dude. You're a good dude. Um, 
you know, you don't need to prove so hard to the world that you are. And that's really it, you know, that's really it. I don't know. Fuck, what do I know, you know? Wish Liam nothing but the best. What did you guys think about that video? Other than that, guys, if you want to watch my full uncut reaction and analysis, all you need to do is go to my Patreon page. I've included the link in my description below. My name is Max. I'll catch you soon. Peace.